uh, in Psalm 89 over the last couple of days. It's a fairly long psalm, 52 verses, and uh, spent some time meditating and praying and reflecting on the concepts in, in this psalm. It's a great psalm, as, of course, they, they all are. Very familiar, a couple of very familiar verses out of Psalm 89. A couple of the songs that we use in worship are inspired, come right out of this psalm, reading out of the ESV, Psalm 89, 1. Uh, by the way, written, this psalm was written by Ethan the Ezraite. You probably did not know that a guy by the name of Ethan wrote part of the scriptures, but here it is. So one of the little-known authors of the Word of God, a guy by the name of Ethan the Ezraite. Anyway, here's how Psalm first one goes. I will sing of the steadfast love. The King James translates it mercies. I will sing of the steadfast love or the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth, I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. And then another one down in verses 13 and 14, another familiar worship chorus comes out of this verse. You have a mighty arm, strong as your hand, high your right hand, righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Remember, we sing that song all the time. Righteousness and truth is the way it's translated in that song or articulated in that song. Righteousness and justice or truth are the foundation of your uh, throne. Blessed are the people, therefore, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your face, who exult in your name all the day, and in your righteousness are exalted for you, are the glory of their strength. And the psalmist is talking about the kind of God it is that we serve. And he says this, who in the skies or who in the heavens can be compared to Yahweh? Talking about the God that's revealed in the scripture. There are other gods out there. There's Allah. In the days in which this writer was writing, there was Molech and there was Baal and there were other false gods, demon gods, just like like all of it, people and the nations around them worship. So there were other gods out there, other entities, supernatural beings that the people thought were gods. They, they're not. They're just principalities and powers masquerading as gods. But the psalmist says, who in the heavens can be compared to Yahweh, to our God? Who among the heavenly beings is like Yahweh, a God greatly to be feared in the council of the holy ones and awesome above all who are around him. O Yahweh, God of hosts, that's the God of the armies of heavens. When you hear the phrase, Lord God of hosts, hosts is a word that in the Hebrew means an army. So this is, you know, you think of hosts as a guy in kind of a tuxedo and kind of got a napkin draped over his arm. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about warriors. He's talking about green berets. He's talking about Delta Force. And God is a God who rules over an unseen but very powerful army of the heavens. That's what the scriptures mean when they use the term host. O Lord God of hosts, who is mighty as you are, O Lord, with your faithfulness all around you? Well, the answer clearly is no one. No one is as mighty as Yahweh. So if his power is not manifest, it's not demonstrated in some way, uh, then we need to start asking some ser uh, serious questions. If he is mightier and more powerful than anything that we're up against, why don't we see more of the displays of his uh, power? And here we see an explanation down in verse 30. If his children, referring to David, who was the anointed king, highly favored of God, he made a covenant with him, I'm never going to, the day will never come when a descendant of David will not be sinning upon the throne. If his children forsake my law, and do not walk according to my rules, if they violate my statutes and do not keep my commandments, then I will punish their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with stripes, but I will not remove from him my steadfast love or be false to my faithfulness. So in other words, he says, look, if my people, I'm not going to be unfaithful to my covenant, to my promise. That means if my people will come to their senses if they will return to me, if they will humble themselves before me, then I will restore the fortunes of their land. Well, let's pray some of these concepts back to God together. Lord God, we will sing of your great love forever. With our mouths, we will make your faithfulness known throughout all generations. 
We will declare that your love stands forever, that you have established your faithfulness in heaven itself. You rule over the surging sea. When its waves mount up, you still them. With your strong right arm, you scatter your enemies. The heavens praise your wonders and your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. Who in the heavens above can compare with you? Who is like you among the heavenly beings? In the council of the holy ones, you are greatly feared. You are more awesome than all who surround you. O Lord God Almighty, who is like you? You are mighty, O Lord, and your faithfulness surrounds you. The heavens are yours, and yours also the earth. You founded the world and all that is in it. You created the north and the south. Your arm is endued with power. Your hand is strong and your right hand is exalted. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Love and faithfulness go before you. I pray this day for myself and for my family, for the listening audience of Focal Point and AFR Talk, for President Obama and all of our elected officials, for every man, woman, and child in the United States. And I pray that we will learn to acclaim you and to walk in the light of your presence so that we may be blessed. Teach us as a people to rejoice in your name all day long and exult in your righteousness. Be our glory and strength and shield. May your hand sustain us and your arm strengthen us. I ask you to maintain your faithful love to us forever. May you be for each of us our Father, our God, our Rock, and our Savior. In Jesus' name, amen.